Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the world of home tech with me, your host, Paul Hibbert. I don't go supermarket shopping, I clean the bathroom. Nisha goes supermarket shopping because I flipping hate it. But if I didn't flipping hate it, I would use this thing, or in fact this thing, to add things to my shopping list. But I thought we could go a step further than that. Rather than being a caveman and having a list in your mobile phone that you go around the shop with, wouldn't it be nice if these things were already in your basket? Well, Tesco don't have a skill, but they do have an if this then that service, which means I can do this. Okay, Google. Put toilet paper in my Tesco basket. I will fetch you TP for your bunghole. Alexa, add skimmed milk to my shopping list. Skimmed milk added to your shopping list. Anyone who's been watching for a while is about to go, <sighs> Paul's explaining if this then that, again. Well, it's not all about you, so shush, there are other people watching who don't know, so just be quiet. Basically, If This Then That is an internet-based service that allows uh, one service to talk to another that would not normally communicate. In our case, we're going to get Alexa to talk to Tesco. And all we do is we give If This Then That our account credentials so it can log into both on our behalf and get the two things to talk to one another. It is perfectly safe. I promise. Uh, Google it. There are about a million billion people using If This Then That every day, uh, and it's never going to steal anything from you. Don't worry. Quick thanks to Pete Bannum. This is his idea, not mine. I just stole it, like the dirty thief that I am. With his kind permission, of course. Uh, so you'll need to go to If This Then That's website or download their app to your mobile phone uh, because it is internet based, so you can access it from anywhere and configure it from anywhere. Once you are registered, you'll get a screen that looks a bit like this, whichever one you're using, um, and then you go to the bottom right hand corner where it says My Applets. This is because we're creating an app within If This Then That's environment to basically service our needs. That sounds rude. Uh, so once you're in My Applets, you click the plus button at the top. And it's saying, if this happens, what is the this? The this is, of course, Alexa or Google Home. I'm going to say Alexa, so I'm going to say, if this, Alexa, here's that an item has been added to the shopping list. So you need to scroll down and find item added to your shopping list. It'll then say, I don't know who you are, though, so you need to tell me who you are. Otherwise, I don't know which Alexa to listen to. So I'm going to connect my Alexa account. You'll need to connect your Alexa account. If you connect my account then this isn't going to work, so don't do that. So I'm going to sign in with my testbed account, and then... It asks me, what is the that? So what is going to happen when my Alexa, my specific Alexa, hears that something has been added to the shopping list? The answer is, I want Tesco to do something, so I search for the Tesco service. Open that. And you've only got two options, and we want the second one. Don't pick the first, it won't work. So search for and add product to basket, and then it says, whose basket? I don't know who you are. Uh, so press connect. And once again, don't connect to my account. That would be stupid. You'll get my basket. You need to connect your Tesco account. And now it's saying, what exactly do you want to tell Tesco to do? And it adds a big long phrase in there that you don't want or need. If you leave this big long phrase in, it will break. Uh, you need to basically take away everything except for this little ingredient at the end, which is in an obvious box. So leave the obvious box in place and delete everything else. If there are any spaces left in, it won't work, so make sure there's no space before it, and there's no space after it, and press Create Action. It now has created uh, an app within the If This Then That environment that says, if this item is added to your shopping list, then search for it and add it to the Tesco basket. We just press Finish, and we are done. So now we can test it out. Let's do that. If you're a Google Homer, TM, I just made that phrase up to describe Google Home owners, uh, then basically we're going to do the same thing, but the instructions are annoyingly slightly different. So you can see I've now got my uh, Alexa application there. We're going to create a Google Home application by simply pressing the plus button again and saying if this happens, and this time we're going to search for Google, obviously. And you can see we've got Google Assistant there. That's the little fairy that lives in my Google Home. Uh, and we've got now options for what she might be listening for. So we're going to say a phrase with a text ingredient. So you're going to pick number three. It now says, whose Google Home should I listen for? So we're going to press connect. And we're going to connect our Google service. 
And we've now got a bunch of different ways of saying the phrase. So I could say, fetch me some toilet paper, or go to the shops and get me some toilet paper, or stick some toilet paper in my basket, or something ridiculous, if you really want to be ridiculous. So I'm going to say, I don't know, get me some. And what we do is we use a dollar. Uh, so we use the dollar sign to say, fetch me some dollar. Uh, dollar would be nice. It will, in fact, fetch your toilet paper if you ask for toilet paper. Fetch me some dollar. What's another way to say it? Mm. Go out and get some dollar. So um, she will now be listening for those phrases and will go out and fetch whatever we put in in place of the dollar sign. Uh, you have another way, optional, so you can have three different ways of saying it, and then at the bottom you can say, what do you want the assistant to say in response, and we'll say, toilet paper again, in an accusing manner, um, and then we can click create trigger. So that is the this part taken care of. If this happens, Google Home Assistant hears one of those phrases, then make that happen. And we're going to search again for Tesco. I'm going to pick Tesco. And we, again, we're going to say search for and add product to basket. You can see the only option there is text field, and that's actually what we want in this case. So all we do again is click, click create action. And you can see we now have an app that says if you say give me some dollar, then search and add. Give me some dollar. Finish. Job done. Let's test it. Okay, Google. Put toilet paper in the Tesco basket. What's that? It's a bunch of miserable people in my comment section going, Duh, it's much easier than that. Duh. I know it is. Basically, you can just go to the search button and then search for the word Tesco. If you search for the word Tesco, you'll get some recommendations of things people have already made. One of them, of course, right at the top, is Alexa, add something to my shopping list. You can just click that and then press the turn on button. That's fairly straightforward. Similarly, if you scroll down a bit further, you'll find a Google one which does exactly the same thing. Why didn't I just show you that to begin with? The reason is, one, you should learn stuff about if this then that, because it's brilliant. But two, and more importantly, my way is far more malleable. You can choose your own custom responses, you can choose your own phrasing for Google Home specifically. The Alexa one, not so much, but honestly, how long did that take you? I didn't waste that much of your time, get over it. So this is perfect and my life is complete, right? Wrong. Sadly, this is not perfect, but it is quite close. Basically, it's searching for the closest possible match. So if I search for nappies, it finds a baby thermometer, which is ridiculous. Um, if I search for Huggies nappies, it finds nappies, which is less ridiculous, except for the fact I don't have a baby and I shouldn't be searching for nappies. That's just strange. Uh, so you can work around it that way. The other thing is it will actually start to build up a list of favorites for things that you often search and buy on Tesco. If you have a list of favorites, it will pick from that list before it starts searching for random stuff in its own list. So if you buy something regularly, this shouldn't be a problem anyway. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't, it's probably because you don't shop at Tesco. Um, if you don't shop at Tesco, I hope you've learned something anyway. If this, then that is mega powerful. Uh, and you can go through my channel and you'll find a whole bunch of things, ideas and tutorials as to how I've used it. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see some more of me, there's a subscribe button right there with a bell on it. You're supposed to click the bell, apparently, or I might not show up in your feed. Uh, if you want to help support my channel, there is my PayPal for a one-off beer or my Patreon if you want to be like these amazing people, who honestly I am eternally indebted to, uh, and you could buy a, me a monthly beer. Me, 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 a monthly beer. Uh, but that's it. I'll see you next time. I don't go supermarket shopping, shopping. <laughs> uh, sput, if I did. Sput, if I did. Sput, 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 sput. All right, Captain Sweary Pants. <laughs> that being the case, there should well be a tis, 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 <laughs> Stop sweating. Oh man, human body is disgusting. This is the dance of the robot.